Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. It's really a pleasure to be here, also for me, the first time in the Lederhosen on the stage, so a very special day. Um, yeah, my name is Florian Schwantner, CEO and co-founder of Runtastic, and I'd like to share with you, within the next seven minutes, uh, the lessons learned within the last couple of years. Just very short, who we are. So, in facts and figures, we are four founders, we are almost six years old, we are 140 employees right now, so just this year we grew from 100 to 140 employees, so we are still growing a lot in a very fast way. Uh, we never got investment, so we are really a bootstrap company, and I will t tell you a little bit more what is the advantage if you don't have the millions of, uh, to waste and spend. Um, we got more than 140 million downloads within these six years. That means um, just that year, uh, we have an average download um, counter a day of 150,000, which means each second there's 1.7 Runtastic downloads. And think about, we're just in the health and fitness space, and we are really driving a lot of people. And even our company, people in Austria, we have 26 different nations in our um, startup. And that is also very important. So we talked already about internalization, globalization, and that was also one key to success and we are one team, and we are sharing one vision. So I'd like to tell you a little bit more about so being a bootstrap company and never get this money and VC money. So the reality is really we didn't get any funding. People told us, don't do that. Four founders, that will never work. So really things like that. The solution, or what we came up with, is you really have to think about a business model from the very early beginning. That means you think how I can monetize, what can I do? Also what we did, we worked at the weekend. Um, for example, I worked as a lecturer at the university. We took the money and really spent it into our startup. And so you're becoming really careful with spending money, so you don't waste money at all. Uh, with that fact, of course, you don't have any dollars for marketing. So that was also was one step why we thought we have to think about word of mouth. What can we do that people talk about Runtastic, that they share it. And so we included in our running app, like this Facebook sharing, it was really very at the beginning, and people love to share their runs. And so you did a Runtastic run here and there, and so the product became viral, and we really got a lot of traction without spending one dollar into marketing. And also being based in Austria, it's eight million people. You can't think big with eight million people, so you have to think international. That was also one thing what we did here, for example. Um, we thought about we need the uh, app in more languages, not just German and English. So we asked our power users, for example, in France, in Italy, in Spain, would you like to help us to translate our app? And they really were eager to help us, and we didn't pay them. They were proud. They visited us in our office. They were part of the Runtastic team somehow without spending any money. So what I would like to tell you, and that is really a thing, you don't need always big money to do something. You, have, you really can make use of the crowd. Just ask and do that. People are proud and help you. And the good thing, they do understand the business because they were runners. They know what is a the pace. They know all that stuff. So that was very cool as well. And Last but not least, time is limited. Really think about when you're starting uh, a company, where you spend your time. What we really figured out that networking might be cool, but really think about do you have to be on each networking event or when does it make sense to go to a conference. You know, at the beginning, you're kind of fighting that you can visit all those great uh, events, and I think this event is really an event where I would and should go, um, even from the very early beginning, but all these mingles during the week and things like that, really think about that. And when you're becoming successful, you will get a lot of requests, and then you have to, say, have to learn, say no. At the moment, I get about 30 requests a week for speaking opportunities, and you really have to learn no, 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 because we have to work by the end of the day. That is what we should do. Um, next step, um, we are in the app business. I would like to tell you a little bit about the app business. The market has changed a lot. I think back 2009, having a stable and high quality app was really the key to success. For us, building the GPS that it works in a good way, things like that. But nowadays, that is just the basics. If you're doing an app, and I think the app market is one of the toughest market in business right now, you really have to think about the user dynamics, um, a user journey, how you can A-B test your product, how you can get out fast and really try all the little details. So for example, we are going to launch a new app by next year. There will be so many journeys what different users in different countries can walk through that is really a bunch of work. 
So that is one thing. And um, just to give you two examples, for example, A-B testing in apps is really, really necessary in my opinion. We're using a framework called Optimize that we can immediately change buttons, text, graphics, colors, and really try out the conversions. What are going to people click, which text would work, things like that. And we can do that without updating the app. That's the good thing. So even the marketing team can work um, with that. Another good example, what we figured out, it's all about ratings and having good rated apps. So some of you might know the Net Promoter Score. What we have done here, the Net Promoter Score, is if you ask somebody how likely you would recommend a product. And for here, what we implemented is like, tell us what you think. Would you recommend Rantastic to your friend? And if uh, the customer says 9 or 10, then we directly forward the customer to the App Store for an app rating. And the chances that you get a 4 or 5 stars rating are really, really high. If you just wrote 0 to 5, uh, we ask the people, what can we make better? What is wrong? What is not working for you? So there are often very simple tricks and simple things you should think about. Um, growth. Um, here I have three pictures for you. I think when you're starting a company, it's like being a pedal boat. You can pedal here, you're going to the right, here to the left. So you really can try a lot and being very, very flexible. Then, but the speed is a little bit missing. Then your team is growing. You're getting bigger and becoming this really cool agile speed boat. And then you have to be careful eh, that you are not going to be a tanker. And that is really the challenge uh, with growth because you have to think about scalability, things like that. And we are between 210 and 215, and we have to be careful. Eh? That's just one thing I would like to uh, remember all of you. Um, I brought a few more slides, what I really like to show. Use your imagination. Um, even if you are just a paper airplane, think about you could be really a big, big plane and just think big. That is what we Austrians, Europeans, Germans really need, think bigger. Another point is the greatest inspiration is the deadline. Whatever you are doing, think about your deadline. That is very, very important. Doesn't matter how HL your company is. Don't forget to smile. That is why we are here for. That is why we are here for in life. Work should be fun, even though it's not always that simple. And really one very good one I like most because many people told us, don't do that. Don't found fantastic. Don't let anyone tell you you're too young to accomplish something. A baby shark is still a fucking shark. So if you're hungry, you can do it. Think about that. Really, that's very, very important. And coming to my last slide, um, we are ready for the next journey. As we just have heard, um, since two months, we are part of the Adidas group, and we are very happy. And we think there's a big challenge and an incredible journey in front of us. And so I'm really happy to see what will happen within the next years. And yeah, so thank you for your attention. Really happy to be here. And thanks again. Danke. Florian, it's really great to have you here. First of all, the most important device is the original. That is important, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you a collector's lot. device. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, in order to learn a little bit more about the acquisition and about the future of the awesome things that you're about to build together with the uh, uh, Adidas group, I'd like to bring out your boss. Would that be okay? That's your new fine boss? for me. Yeah. Yes, I'm okay. So hello. we are happy to have the CEO of Adidas today with us, and he will be joined by the former chairman of the McKinsey Group of Germany, and he's going to conduct the panel. So without further ado, please give a big applause to the both Herberts, Professor Herbert Hensler and Herbert Heiner. Thank you. So, these are like, they don't be afraid of the young people. You aren't, right? No, not at all. Uh, this is uh, one of the reasons why we bought him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like this comment, not too young <laughs> to do, try something new. Exactly. But we were very eager to learn about the future plans on how Adidas will actually deal with the digitization of the world. So without further ado, I'd like to invite you to sit, make yourself comfortable, make yourself a home, and Fluent, we just go and listen to them backstage. Yep.